Hi guys, thanks for joining. Um, in this talk I'll be presenting Cilium Standalone XDP L4 Load Balancer. My name is Andre Blazik and I work for a company uh, called Seznam based in Czech Republic. Uh, before I dive into Cilium, uh, I will shortly describe uh, our infrastructure, how, how everything works and uh, uh, well what you should be expecting from from the talk. Uh, so initially we have our internet clients and uh, for some of you who run everything in uh, in public clouds uh, most of the load balancing is, is probably handled uh, for you but but we host uh, most of our services in in our own data centers so uh, on one side we have our network load balancing based on IPVS uh, using IPIP tunneling, we load balance to one of our Envoy proxies, which then uh, distribute the traffic, load balance the traffic to one of our uh, either Kubernetes or OpenStack clusters where the actual backends are, are running. So the plan is simple. It's to replace IPVS with Cilium. Uh, thanks to Cilium having, having the same features, as, uh, as what we use in, in with IPVS, this should be fairly simple. And I'll show you in a minute uh, how you can launch uh, launch Cilium. Uh, Cilium itself is uh, is released as a as a Docker image. So if in case you you don't want or don't need to modify anything in the in the Cilium uh, repo. Uh, you can use the the Docker image directly and uh, run it, for example, like here uh, in a Docker container. Uh, so the important part is is here. It's the maglev algorithm, uh, which, uh, with regards to IPVS, it's been in the Linux kernel since uh, 4.18, I think, uh, and in Cilium it's uh, since uh, 1.10 release. So it's important for us, so uh, we we use it like this. Uh, here you specify a direct server return, a native acceleration, uh, IPIP dispatch algorithm for the tunneling, and a data path mode LB only. Okay. We also serve both IPv4 and IPv6 services, uh, so we enable uh, both of these options. So this way you can you can run. Uh, the L4LB and once you have that up and running you can use its API to uh, configure all of the services. So using a, a CLI for example you can do a Cilium service update. Uh, under ID uh, you will uh, choose some number. On the front end you will put your virtual IP plus the TCP port uh, and under backends uh, we put our Envoy proxies. Uh, the important part is uh, a service type which is a node port and that one uses the XDP hook so so uh, be sure you have you have this correctly configured so once you have once you have Cilium configured uh, you need some way to well to announce uh, the IP addresses of each service into neighbor routers so we use we use BERT for that we use BERT uh, system D service for IPv4 services and BERT 6 for IPv6 services, otherwise it's uh, it's the same uh, service. So that handles uh, the BGP announcement because our uh, infrastructure uh, uses uses BGP uh, routing protocol. Uh, so once you have this, uh, your clients should be able to connect. So this way. Uh, you can launch Cilium and that's what we did and right after we started with the testing. So initially uh, we went for a synthetic test we decided to run a synthflat attack. Uh, we knew that, that IPVS well, could have some, some problems with that and we, we went for a moongen packet generator based on DPDK to, to generate uh, the traffic. 
we choose just one CPU to generate the traffic and we randomize some data in the TCP segment uh, so that the total length of the packet is 64 bytes. So that's, what that's how we configured the MoonGen clients. And on the other hand, we, we had some legitimate client who was sending uh, uh, HTTP GET requests uh, to the same service. Uh, and so we we wanted to see uh, if if everything is successful or not. So then the the APVS was was load balancing to uh, to some of our backend proxies. And let's see the results. So with uh, one million packets per second, uh, well we were surprised that uh, that it's so close to to IPVS limits. Uh, but as you can see, uh, one one core was was already uh, reaching its maximum, and it means uh, we expected to see some some packet drops. And that's what happened uh, at the legitimate client output window. So there was a connection timeout from from time to time, which was not not uh, that often. It was not yet uh, a total maximum of APUS, but when we went higher to 3 million packets per second that was that was the end of IPVS so this was super important uh, numbers for us and we saw at the, at the client output that well all the other packets all the requests were basically lost and uh, well the CPU load just uh, showed 100 percent so that was that was the end and we had uh, so much expectations for 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 Cilium, uh, that actually showed us that uh, it works great. Uh, initially, we started with the same numbers. We started with one million packets per second, uh, then with three million packets per second. Uh, this is not a typo. So we, we ended at ten million packets per second because. Actually, at this speed, uh, the CPU load of the of the L4LB actually showed us something because before uh, the numbers were so low, uh, it was not worth showing the showing it here. And as you can imagine, uh, in the client uh, output window, everything was successful, and this was a this is a huge success. And uh, uh, you can see it's more than ten. 10 times better uh, for this test than compared to, to IPVS. So we went we went higher, we went to 14.8 uh, million packets per second, uh, that's where we stopped because at this speed we uh, we saw uh, multiple connection uh, failures and it was still not hitting uh, a CPU limit so this was caused by the by either the the neck of the of the L4LB or the or the rotor in front, uh, because that it was simply simply too too many packets to uh, to handle. But still, we were not hitting the maximum, and this was a uh, um, the huge success. But still, uh, this was only the synthetic test. We we wanted to see the proof from from production so we we decided to put uh, one node uh, or to take out one node replace ipvs with psyllium and and put it into production and that's what we did here so we we took out the the green one the green node uh, we deployed psyllium on it and uh, we had the other two nodes running ipvs it was not this is not uh, from uh, the whole production is only uh, only part of it because we wanted to we wanted to see only only on a small portion of the traffic how how good it is and uh, you will see it in a, in a minute how how good uh, so just to just to summarize uh, some from 1105 until approximately 11 11 13 uh, all the traffic was handled by the Silim l4 lb then uh, we started BERT on the other two nodes running IPVS and stopped the BERT on, on the psyllium node so that, that the traffic is, uh, is gracefully 
uh, handled by the by the IPS nodes. So then we we uh, looked at the CPU load and and stopped for a minute because at one point we were not even sure if if we did something wrong or uh, if what we're seeing I is truth. But then uh, we looked closely and that's when the wow effect really came because handling 800k packets per second by the Silvium L4 LB showed us that it needs only half of a CPU core compared to the same, the same traffic handled by, by two IPVS nodes both of them using 18 CPU cores well, that says that we are saving 36 CPU cores when we replace IPVS with psyllium. Uh, this was a this was a huge, huge success, and uh, that's what you should actually take away from the from this talk. Running psyllium L4LB at the trial layer has amazing performance with a very small CPU footprint. I showed you that we, sh we saved 36 CPU cores, but that was only a part of our, of our nodes. If we deployed it everywhere, we could save so much more. So the more traffic you're handling, the more CPUs you can, you can actually save. That means you can save so much money. And that's, that's the huge, huge success story of of uh, of us running running L4 LB. So with that, I would like to thank you. Thank you so much for listening, and thanks uh, to everybody involved in in Cilium project. Thank you.